Let's be honest, the cinematic video mode of the iPhone 13 and of course 13 Pro and Pro Max does create nice clips with background blur, but that alone doesn't make the videos automatically look cinematic. Today I will show you how to really shoot cinematic videos with your iPhone and how to create a beautiful cinematic look. And I promise you, it's not that hard. Just take a few minutes to watch this video in full and then follow the 5 steps I'm about to explain. So let's start with the first step to cinematic film look. That's the right camera settings on your iPhone. For optimal video quality, I would basically recommend you to set the best resolution possible, which would be 4K. Also, when it comes to cinematic footage, the frame rate is very important. In professional movies, a low frame rate of 24 frames per second is basically used. In the PAL region, mainly outside the US, that would be 25 frames per second. Such a low frame rate does cause the shot to look less fluid than, for example, a shot taken at 30 or 60 frames per second. However, our eyes have long since become accustomed to this look. A shot taken at 30 frames per second will therefore look smoother, but not as cinematic. In some cases, it can be useful to use a higher frame rate of 60 frames per second anyway. If you shoot at 60 frames per second, you can create a slow motion shot of 40%, as I did here in this shot. This can also create a very cinematic effect. Slow motion shots also have the advantage that they stabilize the image as well. Basically though, I would only recommend shooting in 4K60 if you really want to create slow motion. Shooting in 4K60 requires more storage space and creates more compression artifacts. When you're doing camera moves, you should also lock the exposure and focus on your iPhone. This is easily done by tapping and holding the screen. This will prevent your iPhone from adjusting focus or exposure during recording. You can then use the sun icon to adjust exposure a bit, making the shot a bit brighter or darker. For a cinematic look, it would also be important that your shutter speed that is the exposure time for the individual frames is exactly twice as high as the frame rate. At 24 frames per second, that would be a shutter speed of 148th or 150f. This is the only way to create enough motion blur. If the shutter speed is too high, which is usually the case in daylight, there is a lack of motion blur. With the standard camera app, however, it is not possible to set the shutter speed manually. For this, you need an additional app, for example, Filmic Pro. In daylight, a low shutter speed also usually leads to overexposure and you need ND filters to let in less light. The electronic stabilization will also work worse with a low shutter speed. A low shutter speed therefore leads to a perfect cinematic look. However, it is difficult to implement on the iPhone and it also has disadvantages. Your iPhone 13 and 13 Pro can also capture a video in HDR Dolby Vision. This allows your iPhone to display very bright areas in the image, for example light sources, much brighter. This makes the video look much more realistic. However, you also need an HDR capable screen for this, which the iPhone's display of course is. But this is still not the case with most monitors and displays. Also, Dolby Vision can make editing the video clips more complicated. For this reason, I would recommend you disable Dolby Vision for our purposes today. It's a similar story with Apple ProRes. Yes, it's true, ProRes is ideal for editing your video clips. The video files are compressed much less and therefore contain much more information. However, the file sizes are so gigantic that ProRes is hardly usable in practice. The transfer of the files alone takes an eternity and the difference in image quality is so small that it is hardly visible. And then of course, there is the somewhat curious question of whether you should use the cinematic video mode for cinematic shots at all. And the answer is yes, but only in certain situations. But unfortunately, it doesn't always work perfectly. Depending on how sharp and contrasty the edges are, an object or person may or may not be cut out well. Sometimes the results just look artificial and digital which they are. And when something does not look cinematic, it's a clip that looks artificial and digital. The mode just is not fully perfected yet. Also, you can only shoot in 1080 and 30 frames per second. I can still live with 1080, but the 30 frames per second limitation is contradictory if what I told you earlier is true. But actually, the cinematic video mode sometimes produces quite nice and good looking shots. Most of the time though, I would prefer the normal video mode. And I'll show you how to create a blurry background with that too in a moment. Okay, so we have our iPhone set up optimally. Then we come to the second step. 
the actual shooting of our video clips. And here again, I have a number of tips and tricks for you that you should definitely consider to make your footage look as cinematic as possible. The first thing you should definitely pay attention to is the lighting. If you don't use professional studio lighting, get out of your house and shoot outdoors in natural light. The results will be much better. And even when shooting in natural light, you should keep a few principles in mind. In most cases, your shots will look more cinematic if you take them in soft light. You will find such light just before sunset, for example, in the so-called golden hour. Also, if it's cloudy, the clouds can act as a large softbox, softening the light. Clouds can also add drama to your scene. It's much harder to get a cinematic shot in sunshine and midday. The sun leads to unsightly shadows and the general scene is very brightly exposed. Now that you've found a time and location with nice light, be sure to give some thought to the composition of your shot. Similar principles apply here to some extent as in photography, although you might want to pay even more attention to what story you want to tell when filming. Is the rule of thirds useful or should you place your subject in the center? Often it can be useful to place objects in the foreground. In combination with camera movement, this can add a lot of depth to the shot. And that brings us to the next aspect, camera movement. You can enhance many of your iPhone shots with camera movements and make them look more cinematic. For beginners, I would recommend a few very simple movements. A very simple but very effective movement is for example the dolly forward. Here you simply move straight forward with your iPhone. This immediately makes the shot look more dynamic and cinematic. Also simple and effective is a sideways movement, making sure you don't just turn from left to right with your iPhone, but actually move it from side to side. It makes a huge difference. In the same way, you can also move your iPhone from bottom to top and do what's called a revealing shot. These are very simple movements to begin with but they make a huge difference and often look much more cinematic than fancy camera movements. Always make sure to move your iPhone slowly and keep it as stable as possible. As you can see, I often use a smartphone gimbal. I'm not suggesting that it's always necessary. Still, the gimbal can be an advantage, especially for bigger movements. Should you not want to use a gimbal, then I recommend at least a simple hand grip. Such a hand grip makes camera movements much easier. If you are interested in what gimbal and accessories I use with my iPhone, check out the links in the video description. With the iPhone, it is possible to create a shallow depth of field even without using the cinematic video mode. The effect will not be as strong as with cinematic video, but the result will look more natural and there will be no imperfections at the edges. It's very simple. You should use the standard lens or even the telephoto lens. You should then get as close as possible to your subject and the background should be as far away as possible. If you follow these rules, you can also create a blurred background or foreground with your iPhone and without any artificial effects. The next step is often underestimated, but it is absolutely crucial for a cinematic clip choosing the right music and sound effects. Take a look at the footage from the intro without any music at all. Not so exciting, is it? Or how about a completely inappropriate song? Especially if you want to publish your videos, for example here on YouTube, you also have to be careful not to violate any copyright laws. To solve these problems, I've been using the music licensing service Audio for some time now. And Audio is also the sponsor of this video. But I would not recommend the service to you if I were not convinced of it. For me, it has three key advantages over the competition. Audio has a very clear user interface that is extremely easy to use. Here you can choose the mood, the genre or even the video theme. And of course, there is cinematic as a genre. As you can see, the platform is quite easy to use. And that also means that it's quick and easy to find a suitable song or effect. And that saves time. The quality of the music and songs is certainly one of Audio's strengths as well. And then Audio has another really crucial advantage, and that's the price. Audio is currently offering the Pro License with full access to the service at a 70% discount. That's only $59 for a whole year. To take advantage of this offer, just click on the link in the description and use the promo code PRO70. Alright, now we have found the right song and captured the right clips. Now you should follow a few more important steps when editing your video. I myself use Final Cut Pro 10 to edit my iPhone clips. But what I'm going to say today works exactly the same with any other editing program. Very importantly, we are creating a project at 24 frames per second. As I mentioned earlier, it's this low frame rate that creates the cinematic look. Also, we either shot our footage at 24 frames per second or want to slow it down to 24 frames per second. After we import our clips onto the timeline, we put them in the right order and cut them to the music, for example, depending on the situation and the project. I would now add a letterbox effect to the video. This effect gives you a 
video a new wider format. It's just a small step, but it makes an extremely big difference. Again, because we are just used to seeing professional movies in this wide format, you can still move the position of your clip up or down. This letterbox effect also has disadvantages, and sometimes it can be an advantage if you already create your project in a wider format. For YouTube, for example, I could recommend you a format of 2 to 1. This way, after exporting, you will get a video that already contains a widescreen format, and not a video with the usual 16 to 9 format which only has black bars at the top and bottom. The last step to our cinematic iPhone video clip is the color grading. Today, I want to briefly show you how I quickly and easily make the colors of the iPhone footage look a bit more cinematic. This won't be a detailed color grading tutorial. Rather, I'll show you a few quick and easy steps to a cinematic look. Again, the tools for color grading work the same in any editing program. There are color wheels and also curves. The footage from the iPhone already has a very contrasty and saturated look. Still, I'm going to add some more contrast and make the image a little darker. For this I will use the curves. The upper areas represent the bright areas in the image, the lower ones the dark areas. I mainly make the dark areas a little darker and brighten the bright areas slightly. The result is a somewhat strange S-curve. This step alone already makes this big difference. Now I edit the colors. I will first slightly change individual colors. You can do that with these hue and saturation curves. I'll pull the blue very slightly towards teal and also the green slightly upwards. Even more important is to desaturate single colors. For this I use this hue versus saturation curve. I especially pull the saturation of blue and green down. Please remember, there is no such thing as the one film look. This is really just an example of a quick cinematic color grading. Finally, we add some color. For this I use the color wheels. I work mainly with the shadows and the highlights in this step. I add a very dark blue to the shadows and a mix of yellow and orange to the highlights. Here you can see again the difference we created. It really didn't take much and it looks much more cinematic. If you don't feel like creating your own looks, you can find some cinematic LUTs I created for you in the video description. You can download them for free and use them for all your projects. And just give me a like as feedback if the video was interesting for you. And don't forget to take a look at audio. There will be more iPhone tutorials to come, so stay tuned and see you next time.